President Trump warning our nuclear arsenal is stronger and more powerful than ever before. That came in one of his morning tweets. And it all comes as North Korea is promising an attack if tensions escalate even further than they already have. So to start this hour, House Foreign Affairs Committee member, Florida Republic, uh, Republican Congressman Ted Yoho joins us. Congressman, thank you very much for coming on. And this, this whole idea of we would win if it comes to that, which is essentially what Secretary Mattis is, uh, is saying, what do you make of that? I mean, there's no real dispute that the United States would win a military conflict if it ever came to that. That's not what the experts are disputing. They're disputing whether that's a, a good idea in any circumstance because of the risk. And you say what? Connell, number one, appreciate you having me on. And, you know, we're not going to go down that path, I don't think. You know, it's, I don't want to say it's rhetoric. It's strong language. And unlike the previous administration where there were red lines drawn, I think this president and this administration has shown they're willing to back up. Our response is going to be not, um, not out in front. We're going to respond to what North Korea challenges us to do. So our actions will be dependent on what North Korea does. Our goal is to have a, a diplomatic and a peaceful negotiation to get this under control. That sounds like what the Secretary of State Rex Tillerson certainly was talking about today. But to your point about rhetoric and whether or not a red line was drawn, what about this president drawing one with the fire and fury comments? You didn't think so? Well, I think you've seen this president doesn't make uh, threats. He, he'll, he'll follow through on actions. The goal is for North Korea is the one that will determine what those actions are. That's why, you know, I chair the uh, Asia right. Pacific Subcommittee on Foreign Affairs, and that's why we've worked closely with uh, the State Department, with Secretary Tillerson, and we've ratcheted up the sanctions on the world community, particularly China, with primary, secondary, and tertiary sanctions from their government to the businesses to the banking systems uh, to put the pressure on North Korea. China, as we know, counts for 90% of the trade that North Korea does. They're the ones that have the biggest influence on China. And again, we're not trying to attack anybody. You know, right. our goal is to have a peaceful negotiation so that we can bring this conflict under control. Yep. But when you have somebody like uh, Kim Jong-un that repeatedly makes threats of attacking our mainland or Guam, you know, this has to be responded to and let's get to the negotiating table. And if he keeps doing it, if he keeps making not only those threats, but he keeps testing missiles and doing what he's done, what his history has shown that he, Kim Jong-un, will do, then to your point, it has to be backed up, right? Isn't that what the president said yesterday? And doesn't that include the possibility of a preemptive military strike if he really means what he says? Well, I think, um, as the president has said since day one, all options are on the table. I think that's very well known around the world. And if you keep walking by a rattlesnake and it's curled up and he's rattling his rattler, uh, at some point something has to be done. You know, our goal is to get him, Kim Jong-un, and the, and the North Korean regime to come to the table with China, with the other nations, to put the pressure on them and come to their senses. Again, a nuclear war is not going to help anybody. Uh, and we don't want the threats of going after Guam, our territory. What they need to understand, and I think the, the administration and Secretary Tillerson have been very clear on this, that we're going to stand to protect our sovereignty, our nation, our allies, our troops in South Korea, and that we will not tolerate the continued threats. Because uh, at some point, he's going to cross a line, he right. being Kim Jong-un, that will determine the actions of the United States or the rest of the world community. Yeah, that's why I'm having trouble with all options being on the table uh, explanation that they really are. I mean, I know the threat has been made to Guam uh, by the North Koreans, and that's a U.S. territory. But it seems to me that the uh, far greater danger here is that if there is some sort of a military conflict, however it starts, there's a huge threat to our allies. And there's a huge metropolitan area around Seoul, South Korea. I think it's 25 million. There's a huge metropolitan right. area around Tokyo, Japan. In all, it's something like 38 million. So are we willing to risk the amount of casualties that would almost undoubtedly be sustained if military conflict ensued? And if we're not, are all options really on the table? Well, again, all options are on the table, and that's to get North Korea to come to the table. And if you look at what we've done with the sanctions, you know, I think the reason that you're seeing North Korea being so belligerent is because they know these sanctions are for real this time. You know, when China came out, when the U.N. voted unanimously, it's not just America. It's the rest of the world saying you have to stop this. And I think you're seeing Kim Jong-un act um, angry. And hopefully he'll understand that the world's not playing with them, that they will come um, 
to, to respond to this uh, um, rhetoric. That, right. I don't want to say it's rhetoric. His actions. His actions are going to uh, determine the response from the world. There'll be some sort of talk about pressure on China. Here. No, that's okay, Congressman. Um, we thank you for your time, and thank you so much for coming on again. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Serious, serious Appreciate time. it. You have a great day. Yeah.